Praying's changed it changed a whole lot and how you do things and it continues to evolve just like Pahuska has turned from a bustling oil town to a deserted ranch town and now to a tourist town. We've come from 24D by itself to Grazon PD to Grazon Next HL which is still a fantastic product now to this DuraCore and that's kind of my introduction on that. Quick thing, DuraCore is a Looks like a Pepto-Bismol color. Has no 2,4-D in it. The neat part about that is, the one thing about 2,4-D is there's a smell to it. There's no smell to it at all. You can put this out and it smells more like bubble gum. And if you have nosy neighbors, this is a good thing to do. No 2,4-D, it's not gonna move anywhere. It's, now the danger of it is if you put it in a six foot swath, it'll be in a six foot swath. There, there's no, help or coverage with it, and it stays right where it is. Don't ask me the cost. Talk to someone at the store about the cost. Uh, it is from my company, so it's not going to be the bargain basement price of something, I will tell you that. But it is a neat new product. It has a residual, and it makes it real easy. Comes in a gallon jug. One jug does eight acres, one pint per acre and it makes the division real easy. For those that are mathematically challenged like I am, you can kill your weeds and just say, hey, that jug does eight acres. Makes it very simple. But the key is, uh, Nathan, you were out at the plots we did out there. We did some stuff west of town, and it's done well. I won't go on too much. I, I don't like to talk about products as much. I know that's my job, but as, as to the reasons to spray and why these things can help you, and when to spray. And then once you're convinced of that, we have the products that can really be good for you and really help you. And those are the things I'm proud of. One thing on DuraCore, if you get a jug of DuraCore, folks, it's a different formulation. It's called a suspension concentrate. After about a month, maybe three weeks, it settles out a little bit. And this, you're gonna have to put your thinking caps on this is what it, you have to do to get it mixed up. You have to do this and that. So be prepared, you're gonna have to do a little extra work. Yeah, one time. one time, we'll do it. If you wanna get really frisky, just do it twice and that'll be your weightlifting. That'll be Ronnie's, Ronnie Newton's <laughs> yoga for the day right there. He can do the, that, that twice. But yeah, it, it, is a, it is a fantastic product. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, one jug, eight acres does not require applicator's license, thank you. Having said that, I would encourage you to have that because you never know when you might need it. You never know when Oklahoma will uh, get a 2,4-D and make that to where you have to have a license. Texas has that, Arkansas has that, no. And, and maybe a little bit because right away, if, if the grass is a little wet, that's the only way you can see it. There's no, the, the color disappears if that's what you're asking, and that's a way different color than normal, but you cannot just see it when it goes down. Yes, absolutely. Boomless, boom, it can be mixed with the dry fertilizer, it can go out anyway, and, and we're real excited about it again because it, it can, non-restricted, no 2,4-D, very safe, to apply, and it gets a bunch of weeds. Name something you're currently not controlling. It gets everything grazed on next HL, and then it gets a bunch more. I will, full disclosure, a lot of the things it gets aren't extra things it gets aren't in Oklahoma. But as an example, something it gets that grazed on next HL doesn't. In southern Oklahoma, there's a plant called marsh elder. Some people call it sump weed. It's known by various names. And as you might suspect, it grows in lower areas. And Grazon Next HL would only get that plant when it was about an inch tall. And yeah. Some of y'all have some weed. You had it last year. You brought it to me, brought me pictures. But when we were so wet last spring, right below them terraces and stuff, you seen something looked a little different. You might have seen no. it in the bar ditch. That's your sump weed. We oh, had it. I didn't know you had it up here. Yes. I guess in a little when it's a little wetter, when it rains 80 inches, we have sump weed in Payne County. Um, <laughs> we did last year. Hey, the way to tell the, the way to tell marsh elder sump weed is is the leaves are, you know, kind of like that. When you feel it, it's real bristly. It's called the pubescence, with the real hairy, 
And that's the way you can tell Marsh Elder, this gets Marsh Elder. And there, so there is a difference here in Payne County uh, that graze on next or 2,4-D or none of the others get. It's still 200 pounds. Here's the deal on that. The fertilizer prill goes to the ground, then it, then it, then it dissolves and it needs good distribution throughout the whole area. And that's why we do 200 pounds. The only time we have real complaints with this, complaints is when they go less than 150 pounds and then they cut the rate on chemical. And those work, it works a lot of time, even with the lessening. But then when I apply a chemical or when I do a job, I want it to work. I don't want to have to think it's probably going to work and I'm real excited about that, that it probably will work. I'm not excited if it probably works, I want it to work. So we recommend the strong dose and the full 200 pounds. You just start getting distribution problems and it looks like a failure of chemical, it's because it's feathered out and it's just not getting a full coverage. So we need 200 pounds. You, you, you spray, as I mentioned earlier, to, to improve the ground. You don't always need to spray every single year. Uh, as you get a place whipped into shape, you can skip a year and then maybe go to another area and, and but with rains like last year you're going to need to spray uh, but we have the products for you i will tell you as a very general spray topic i like to spray early so all the nutrients someone said nutrients or or, or get into the grass because those weeds obviously use the same things that grass does. So you're growing those weeds, grow the grass instead. Oh, one other thing. The gentleman back there asked, what else did we get? We saw a remarkable suppression of the plants, the bad cerecia, not the Korean, the good stuff, on the place we did right out west of town out here with this Duracor. It really, really, it made it into like a miniature cerecia plant where it wasn't even high enough for you to brush hog that it wouldn't have even touched it. So that's something that you won't get with some of the others. You can spray it when it comes up. You want to wait till then because then you maximize the length of the, of the uh, action in the soil to prevent other stuff. So if you spray real early, that is going to wear out eventually and you'll get late season weeds up. So I say wait till half your weeds are up or all of them are up and they're still pretty, some are a little bigger, some are smaller and then maximize that residual to go as long as you can into the year. And folks, no, no, I don't want to give any false impressions. We talk about residual. When you have a year like last year and you get rain after rain after rain, I don't want you to think, wow, that just didn't last long. I'm, something failed. It did. It rained 40 inches. And so think of residual. It's a great thing. Those are meant for normal. Whatever normal is in Oklahoma, uh, that's normal. Um, it, it, it's, it's, the, it's anybody's guess? That's right. So, yeah, but, but spray moderately early and every year. Don't go by time of year. Don't go by, hey, last year I sprayed on April 15th. April 15th this year might be two weeks behind last year or it might be two weeks ahead. Go by size of weeds. Are most of your weeds up? If they are, it's a good time to spray. They are so far opposite on how to control them. Uh, I know this is being recorded, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. Your best thing on buck brush is, you, you have two to three week period of time. Buck brush will appear whitish, grayish, silver, depending on how the sun's hitting it. You need to spray it during that time. After that, your control is gonna be very limited no matter what you do. You take the leaves off and it's back the next year. So spray it during that time. We have three products. We have uh, Chaparral that'll get it. Uh, but if you wanna save money from Chaparral, use uh, Grazon Next for your weeds and then put some form of Metsulfuron in. I don't sell Metsulfuron, so I can't vouch for it killing it, or 2,4-D ester. I don't sell 2,4-D ester, so I make no claims on what will work, but that's the cheapest way to go after it. The one that will work, absolutely, uh, is our product Chaparral at uh, three ounces. But now, that was for the buck brush. For blackberry, since no one has ever mowed over blackberry, we don't have to worry about that. It's easy to kill. Uh, no response, okay. <laughs> uh, 
Most Blackberry's been mowed over for 30 straight years, and if it's not 30, it's 40 or 25, and it gets really hard to kill. And the best time to do it is let it go for a year, get a good growth on it, and then spray it then with full growth, and then wait at least three to six months before you mow it afterwards. That's hard to do sometimes when you have one pasture and it's, mo it's grown up in blackberry, but that's the best way. Don't mow it before, don't mow it afterwards. Let it fully process the chemical. The one I like, Chaparral works well on it. Combination of Chaparral and Remedy works on it. Uh, Re uh, Pasture Guard works on it, Surmount works on it. We have a number of things that work on it. It really depends on what else you have out there as to, as to what you use. I like to wait till midsummer to do it after the berries appear, and I think that's the best time. You'll get arguments from other people that do it after flowering. That's a good time too, but don't do it while the berries are growing because the energy of that plant is coming from the root to the leaves, and it's going to just get a top kill, and you won't kill any of the roots. You want to do it when it's recharging the root system, and that's when you want to kill a blackberry plant during recharge. You can also do that way into the fall, but then you've lost that whole year. Mm -hmm.